simply put, Vinny Goodwill, Boston shit the bed at the crib uh, while the Heat grinded its feet in the Celtics couch for a third time in this series. Uh, you, when we were texting and I said, hey, man, what are you doing Tuesday morning? Can you join me after game seven? You're like, cool, but ain't no way game seven is going to follow up game six. And you called it. But I don't think we could have seen it happening like that. What did we see Monday night in game seven? <laughs> I think we saw a number of things. I think we saw that this Celtics team still hasn't grown up from the team yeah. that collapsed in the finals after taking a 2-1 lead against the Golden State Warriors. We saw a team that is a little too cool. You know what I mean? A little too cool for school. Like, they lost game seven because of largely Jason Tatum's ankle injury really disrupted a lot of things that they, yeah. a lot of the momentum that they had going, right? But you yeah. lose the series when you go down 3-0 and you give yourself zero margin for error. You lose the series when you lose the first two games at home. You know, when you piss off Jimmy Butler in game two, when 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 that dude was sleeping. You know what I mean? Like, that's where you lose a series, where Grant Williams is the only dude that, that shows a little bit of fire. So, for me last night, it was just the culmination of everything this Celtics team was this season. A few moments where you're like, man, this is the most talented team in the league, right? Yeah. A few moments, up and down, they look like that. But as a whole... It's a lot of questions about the roster, a lot of questions for a team that's went to five Eastern Conference Finals in seven years and has one champion, one championship appearance to show for. You know who they remind me of, Michael Smith? Hmm. They remind me of the post-championship Rasheed Wallace Detroit Pistons. Okay. A team that was, yes, really talented, but they yeah. went through coaching changes and they would find themselves in these dog fights of series that because they won this championship and because they got back to the finals the year after, they played a little too cool for school. And inevitably, yeah. it would come back and bite them in the butt, bit them against Dwayne Wade, bit them against LeBron James, bit them against those Boston Celtics. And at a point, you're like, okay, where do we go from here? Because we're getting older and we can't keep doing this. The Celtics aren't that yeah. old, but can they keep doing this? Yeah, you know, it's funny. You ever have takes – that don't age well, and then before you know it, it turns out you actually right. You know, like, it's like, because I spent the last, I spent the previous three games eating my words, and like a lot of people, you know, getting caught up in the fact that, wait a minute, the Celtics could actually do this because of the way, the fact that this was an unprecedented 0-3 deficit insofar as that I believe the Celtics were the best team especially relative to their opponent, to be down 0-3. And obviously, nobody had ever forced the Game 7 at home. So there was a path to history being made. And over the course of, of Games uh, 4, 5, and 6, I found myself being like, oh, that, 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 didn't, that didn't age well. And those words specifically were that the Celtics' collective heart pumps Kool-Aid. Okay? And come Game 7, I, look, man, Jason – it felt a lot like when Brock Purdy got his elbow blown up in the NFC Championship game. Once yep. Jason Tatum rolled his ankle, they were playing with one hand behind their back. But there was still plenty enough against a group of players that Jalen Brown earlier in the series said that we should be controlling. Like, look, man, I get your best players compromised. But so was Miami's. Because for the most part, the last couple of games, Jimmy Butler was self-checked. You remember, remember that member on the park, self check? Like that was because oh, I know self check oh, when I see it, because that was me. <laughs> that was me on the playground line. So I know somebody that self check when I see it. So their best player in some respects was compromised. You can't let Caleb Martin come in your crib and again grind his feet on your couch. Like the Celtics have zero excuse. No, they didn't have a margin for error once they dug themselves in 3 hole and give credit to Miami for, for seizing control of the series the way that they did. But, here's, but once you get to game seven, here's the thing about, about coming back from a seven-game series deficit. You don't have to really come – you don't have to win four straight. You got to win three straight because once you get to game seven, y'all both in the same boat. 
So neither team had margin for error, and yet the Celtics did not meet the moment. Specifically, Jalen Brown did not meet the moment. So for me, man, like, I feel like I was right, and it just took a few more games for the Celtics and who they truly are to reveal themselves again. Because if you could play like you did in games four, five, and six, there's no excuse for you playing like you did in games one, two, and three, and certainly no excuse for you not showing up for the most part. Again, I know Jason Taylor was hurt, but that doesn't feel that doesn't feel like a legit excuse in this case. Ordinarily, when your star player is hurt, you're like, yeah, but that, that doesn't feel like a yeah, but in this instance. And it's incredible how a team, Vinny, went from playing with house money to now needing to figure out how to, they go get their house in order. Yeah, that's the crazy part about this because, and I'll, I'll start with that point. If this series ends in game four in a sweep, mm-hmm. we have questions about Joe Missoula. Is he the guy? They yeah. quit on him in game in game three and get blown out. If the same thing happens yep. in game four, you got a lot of questions about the sideline. Maybe not so much about players. You have them more eh. about the coach. You, you, All right, you have I'll, I'll let you finish, but I'll come back to that. Go ahead. I said not relative to the second point. You, you that did I'm about say, to make. yeah, you said maybe not so much. You did. Yeah, you qualified it. You did. Now, because you lose in game seven, you don't really have the questions as much about Joe Mazzulla as you do about Jalen Brown as you do about this entire mix of players. Now, granted, five Eastern Conference Finals in seven years, but they've done a lot of retooling around each and every one of those rosters. Remember, Jason Tatum wasn't on the first Eastern Conference Finals team. That was the, I I believe that was the Isaiah Thomas, the five foot nine Isaiah Thomas team with Jalen Brown as a rookie. Then the next year Mm. you had the Kyrie Irving experience You know what I mean? Like, like in Jason Tatum and all that. So what I'm saying is now you're going to have to retool yet again and say, can we as a collective give Jalen Brown all that money when we saw him throwing the ball around the floor or dribbling it off his foot? Like the funniest thing was Charles Barkley at halftime was so disgusted with the Celtics because they kept taking threes. And I'm like, look, if they're taking threes, that means they're not turning the ball over. The ball got a chance of going in. If Jalen yeah, Brown dribbles, dribbling. that's a pick. You said Brock Purdy. That's a pick six when Jalen Brown started dribbling. Man, I mean, his handle is so weak. And what's interesting about Jalen Brown, second team All-NBA, I don't know that Jalen Brown is really a sidekick. I think he's an ensemble cast member more than he is an actual, like, Scotty Pippen, if I may, a Scottie Pippen to Jalen, yeah, uh, Jason Tatum's Jordan. The name Tatum's you bring Jordan. up around, uh, yeah, the name around I, yeah. these well, parts. I know. I, well, and even in today's news cycle, right? You know, I'm exactly. just saying in terms of like the quintessential sidekick, I don't know that that's necessarily Jalen Brown because he had every opportunity to take the lead in that game. And it's almost like respectfully, because I like Jalen Brown a lot. I like him as a person. I, you know, I like him. I like him as a player. A lot, I like a lot of things about him as a player, but he's he's got fatal flaws. But the pro- the biggest one of those flaws seems to me that he thinks he's Jason Tatum, and 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 last night there were instances where he tried to be somebody that he wasn't, which is a lead dog. Well, this was his moment to be Flash, and I mean Flash is in Dwayne Wade. I mean Flash yeah. as in not the superhero, it, <laughs> not yeah, Barry yeah. Allen. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I meant Flash from the five heartbeats, like it's lonely at the top. That that Flash, yeah. he had his moment. To go and announce his solo album in front of everybody, he had his he had his <laughs> chance to look up with a uh, big red records, right, and leave the group, and the boy kept tripping over himself. And and here's yeah. the thing, for a long time, or for at least a short period of time, Jalen Brown was the better defender out of himself and Jason Tatum, and that was inherently some great value. Now Jason yeah. Tatum's the better defender, the better scorer, more reliable better passer, if you got a guy, your second guy does the same things that your number one guy does, except not as well, and then he's not a distributor, and then he's not reliable with the ball, I'm not saying what are we doing here, but I'm saying is that the best use of our resources? And I don't know if that's the best use of the Celtics' resources – when you've got $285 million on the line 
this You summer. can't justify paying him that, not after this performance. But going back to your point about Missoula, had this been a sweep. See, that was my issue after game three, is I was all about breaking up Boston after game three, because I'm just like, I know you went to the finals last year. I know you're in the conference finals again. But there's something Luther Vandross, rest in peace, something Luther Vandross curled that's not quite right about this collection. And it's not that Jason Tatum can never get there. I mean, because how many, the, the list is long of NBA players that people have said would never, only for them to end up doing it, right? Um, it's not to say that Jason Tatum can't do it. It's not to say that Jalen Brown can't do it. I just don't know that they could do it together. And after game three, when, when they quit, I wasn't looking at Joe Mazzula because, I mean, like, and, and I know Joe, Joe Mazzula is a bright young coach, okay? Uh, timeout usage notwithstanding. Bright young coach. But earlier this year, he was a substitute teacher, okay? He eventually got the interim tag removed. And them quitting on him in game three, to me, was not an indictment of him. I know he said, I didn't have him ready to play. And I know NBA coaches, even championship winning NBA coaches, are the convenient scapegoats for, and we'll get to that in a macro sense in a little bit, been waiting to talk about that, or convenient scapegoats for failures, okay? But I thought that was more a referendum on the Celtics as players, going to your earlier point about them being too cool for school. Like, when you quit in game three, that's on you. You don't need a coach to have you ready to play. Yeah, we knew Spo was going to coach circles around him from an X's and O's and adjustment standpoint. But in terms of a mindset and being prepared to play and, and, and understanding the urgency and not having to have your back firmly against the wall facing elimination before you decide to wake up, that's on Tatum. That's on Brown. That's on Smart. That's on Horford. That's on that's on the players more than it is the coach. Like these are grown ass men. Like you should you can't coach you shouldn't have to coach effort at this level. So for me, this was never about Joe Mazzula as much as it was about the makeup of a team that yes has been a perennial conference final participant and made the finals last year. But I just don't know that they have that next gear that they need to win games like Game 7. Well, here's the thing. Even though they we just did it against Philly. But Philly, right. but, but, it was, but Philly's heart in Game 6 and 7 against Philly. But Philly's collective heart pumps a different flavor Kool-Aid. Mm -hmm. Maybe the Celtics Kool-Aid is red. Philly's is great. I don't know. But they, that, they, were, they, were, they were the Spider-Man meme. The Sixers and the Celtics were the Spider-Man meme, except one of them just has the other one's number. Well, I'm I'm not sure about you. I'm not a grape Kool-Aid is probably on the bottom tier of Kool-Aid yeah, flavors, right? Yeah. I would I would I would go I would go red, which is a flavor, as Cedric yes. once said. I would go yes. red, uh orange, um no, blue. Blue, blue man, blue, blue, the discoloration of anything blue bothers me. Like, I like whether it's like, it just, I don't want to walk around with blue lips, bro. That just, <laughs> it just doesn't, uh, no, no, it tastes good, but blue, huh? My son likes blue. That's interesting. Blue. Well, blue, like a blue I'm raspberry? A, yeah, yeah. Like, I'm a, I'm a little more brown, so the blue doesn't jump out on my skin as much if I were to drink yeah. blue Kool Aid. But, yeah. But it's red all the way, right? It's like number one. Absolutely, just, yeah. Red, red, red okay. the top. Yeah. Red the top. Any red form of red. Strawberry, fruit punch, cherry, yeah. cherry watermelon, even. What yeah. Anyway. What, what were we talking about again? We were talk we were talking about Oh, the a lack Celtics, of heart. <laughs> lack of the Celtics lack of, of want to and here, here's the thing. It's yeah. easy to get seduced by their resilience in three games. Mm. But you've had questions about the same things that you just said, questions about, hey, man, this team doesn't show up every night. And they didn't show up to that point in the biggest game of their season in Miami, that game three, a game where you're supposed to be like, hey, guys, it's time to knuckle down. If we're going to go down, we're going to at least make it difficult for them tonight. And they lay down. And I'm not sure how much of leader guy Jason Tatum is. He seems to be lead by example. You know what I mean? Like, and, and that's mm -hmm. not an indictment of him because I feel like he's become a better player already than I would have expected him to be 
when he got drafted. I wasn't sure what type of player he was going to be coming out of Duke. I thought he was going to be a really good player. I didn't expect this, and he still has more room to grow. So if you have to go find you, you're Draymond Green. And by Draymond Green, I don't actually mean Draymond Green. By Draymond Green, I mean. mean You mean your heartbeat, a stronger heartbeat. Not only your stronger heartbeat, but the guy that makes the game easy for your best player. Like, if there's an acknowledgement that Jason Tatum, if there's an acknowledgement that Jason Tatum is a championship player, that's, that that's a guy that can be the best player on a championship team, that things can revolve around him, then with Giannis, he had Drew Holiday and Chris Middleton, guys to make the game a little bit easier for him in spurts. With Steph, yeah. as much as we think it's Clay Thompson, it's really Draymond Green just because of the ball handling responsibilities and everything else. Like, you go up mm-hmm. and down – the last few NBA champions, there's a guy that says, okay, my job is to make life easier for the guy. There's yeah. not that guy on the Celtics roster. And when you have a head coach who went from the second row of the bench, so he's not even sitting on the front row of the bench, Joe Mazzulla. Mm. Now, he's creative, he's young, he's innovative, all that stuff, but there are certain blind spots that he has just because he didn't have – the experience in the Ime Udoka situation happened so fast and flagrantly and everything else. He couldn't prepare yeah. for this in that way. He's going to have his legs under him a little bit more next season. He's going to be, he's going to feel more secure, you know, in that seat. Maybe you have some different staff members around him that, that sort of bridge the gap. But I think the bigger problem is a lot of times, Mike, we think of wholesale teardowns when you talk about, man, this, there's something wrong with this team. All mm-hmm. you have to do is switch out a player or two. You don't yeah. switch out a no, championship team. You know what I mean? 58, yeah. 58. They're not a lost cause because they lost game no. seven at home. Yeah, no. no. That's what I was going to ask you. Is there a case for, for the most part, or even completely running it back? Because, okay, if you want to if you want to turn the front upside down, if you're in Boston today, and yes, you, you have the dubious distinction. So it's interesting. The Heat ended up making history because it's like, you know, no team has ever come back from a 3 deficit. And only one team has come back from 3 deficit to have game seven at home, which means that only one team has ever had a 3-0 lead, lost that 3-0 lead, and then gone on the road to win game seven. Because what we really got to spend a lot of time talking about is the heat. Because like that they took a they took a Creed 3 uh Diamond Diamond Damien Anderson gut punch. You know that scene in Creed 3 where he like, yeah, yeah, like yeah. they took a gut punch in game six. And then bounced back and went on the road. Booked their flight for Denver. Spoke, they, they were like, "Yo, we going straight to the finals from here." Well, that, well Jimmy well, called it a year ago. Well, they had so to, the Heat deserve well, a lot well, of credit. Well, they had to book their flight to Denver. Like you, you gotta like. Oh, that's that, that's not a that, good story. Yeah, that's not. That's that was kind of. But that was the only flight though. There was no return flight. Don't let the facts get away of a good story. That <laughs> they couldn't wait till the last minute to book the flight. But before we get to the Heat though, before we get to the Heat. I mean, is there something to be said? If you're if you're the most optimistic of Boston fans, you say, "Hey, we had what the second best record in the uh, in the conference uh, in, in the NBA, NBA this the year? second best record in the league." In the, yeah, yeah, in the league this year, um, had the second best record in the league. Best mm-hmm. player mm-hmm. hurt on the first possession, forced a game seven at home. Like, look, this is you want to talk about a stat that blows your mind? Do you know since since the 2016 finals? Home teams are 8 and 11 in game seven. I read that this morning. It blew my mind. Eight and, so, game seven at home, I mean, it's anything could happen, like your star player turning his ankle on the first offensive possession. So, is there something to be said for like just taking a step back? And I'm just playing devil's advocate here. Taking a step back, taking a deep breath, and being like, you know what? There is no failure, there is only steps to success. Now this may this may feel like a step backward, but it, it, like we're talking about, they're not that far away. Hell, they were one game away from a second straight trip to the finals. If they had completed this comeback, if they had completed this comeback, if Caleb Martin doesn't make himself a shit ton of money over the course of this series, these playoffs, but in particular Game Seven, because the way Jimmy Butler was playing, it's not like Jimmy Butler showed up and showed out. If they somehow win this game. Those those same they're the same guys, the same you know Jalen Brown still can't handle the ball if they win this game, you know it's 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 the same same makeup, but they would have found a way to get it done for a fourth straight game. So is this something to be said for running it back, Vin? Well, multiple things because you said a mouthful. 
One, the devil doesn't need an advocate. All right, like I think the devil is doing just fine. Damn. <laughs> you might have just ruined. You might have just ruined that. First of all, I'm 43 years old. Don't lose your thought. I'm 43 years old. Never heard that before. You might have just ruined that phrase for me forever. I may never say devil's advocate again now, ever. After that, you're right. He does it. You were saying. My, my bad. <laughs> Secondly, that is a uh, Eastern Conference Finals MVP Jimmy Butler to you, <laughs> who didn't have. Who, who, he know good and well that wasn't game. his award. And I love Jimmy Butler, but he know good and well that should have gone to Caleb Martin. It probably should have. But uh, trust me, that award will be collecting dust somewhere next yeah. to uh, he, some yeah. big face coffee or something like that. Yeah. You know what he, I mean? did not, he did not seem enthused about that. He wanted the big one. But go ahead. So is there something to run in the back? Yes and no. Yes, because you look no further than the other side of the playoff bracket. The team that's in the finals. The Denver mm -hmm. Nuggets. And everybody mm -hmm. points to the injuries from the past few years. Porter and Murray and not having a full roster. I'm not talking about that team. I'm talking about the Denver Nuggets that lost a game seven at home with Jokic, with Jamal Murray, a game seven at home to the Portland Trailblazers in 2019. In a game where Damian Lillard didn't put them out. CJ McCollum put them out. So then you talk about, hey, do you keep this together? Do we run this back? Is there something wrong with the brew? Is this team too unique to be a championship team? And they banked on continuity and look at where the Denver Nuggets are at. I don't think anybody's beating them in the West over the next couple of years because they found something and now they're healthy. Now, the back end of that. You don't the other think part anybody's that, beating them? Hold up. Don't just gloss over that. Not only is – okay. You don't think NBA, anybody's beating Denver in the West for the next couple of years? They got it like that? Yeah. They're primed. Unless something okay. seismic happens, personnel-wise. Yeah. You look at yeah. all of the teams that we consider contenders, they all have big-time fatal flaws or they old as hell. All right? Yeah. Yeah. And they – and, you know, Jokic in his mid-late 20s, Murray, mid-20s, Porter – early 20s usually that doesn't happen so mm. they are primed to be able to you know to have the championship equity to have health and to also have just enough failure to where they don't want to experience that shit again they ain't trying yeah. to go back to baltic avenue they want to stay on boardwalk right so here's the thing that you brought up and you brought up that stat from 2016 you know what happened in 2016 when you said home teams are eight and 11. Yeah. That was the first year where everybody said, man, Golden State just did something really interesting in last year in 2015 where they shot a bunch of threes. Everybody's going to start trying to shoot a bunch of threes in 2016. And you know what happens mm. in May and June when you're trying to shoot a bunch of threes, especially at home in a game mm. seven where you're going back, forth, back, forth, you lose your legs. So that's yeah, why you you're going to have a lot, a lot you of the variance. Yeah. In, yeah. in a game seven. Luckily for yeah. Miami, they hit their threes. They were good threes. Yeah. They were great threes. You know what I mean? So yeah. going back to your point about Boston, every team, Michael Smith, has a fatal flaw that can prove to be their undoing. It's can yeah. you mask that? You know what I mean? It's like being in a relationship. It's, man, this, this person don't cook or clean, but they do everything <laughs> else correctly. You know what yeah. I mean? They take care can, of me. I can live with it. Yeah, I can live with it. But yeah. if that fatal flaw, that thing that can make you walk out on their ass, just continues to keep popping like for up me, and it's just being up. trifling. Like, like, like I'll tell you, my wife, my wife is is, is a good cook, but like, like, uh, like, like the wife and don't, and, don't get uh, divorced. The, and, don't get divorced. The, the, no, I'm, no, 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 I'm not. No, I'm not. Like, no, I'm not. Come on, man. Like, you know, okay. listen. This, this ain't my first. This ain't my first rodeo. You know how many? You know what dumb shit I've said on camera and lived to tell about it. Nah, I ain't trying to keep pressing my luck, but then, none, nonetheless, uh, like the mama and boomerang. You know, you ain't marry me for my cooking. Like I didn't, I didn't marry Sarah for her cooking. Okay. She became a really good cook. You know, through practice, okay. right? But like the main thing for me is like she is the most organized and she's the neatest person. She's more OCD when it comes to like stuff being straight around the house than I am. That so to your point about like what's a deal breaker is sloppiness. I can't and, and I, I I scream at my kids if they room is is not military clean, right? And so to me, that's the relationship deal breaker. 
Likewise, a deal breaker for me in this ongoing relationship with a Jalen Brown would be, bro, you're too sloppy. So that's it. Like, I don't know that that particular fatal flaw can be compensated running their team the way that they do. Again, I'm, this is and I don't know, this is not a criticism of Marcus Smart. He's long since answered the question about him being a point guard. But like when Tatum got hurt, you could see it every time he came up. He never took the ball up the court. He never initiated the offense. Now, as the game went on and the adrenaline started flowing, he he started to kind of attack more. But as soon as he got it, when they when they were taking the ball out of the basket, as soon as he got, it, he gave it up for somebody else to to start the offense. When if that's Jalen Brown, you got a problem. So. so right. You can't not be a facilitator and be a turnover machine at the worst times and expect us to continue and expect us to say, okay, till death do us part in the form of 200 and is it 85 or 95 million dollars? 285. So again, I was unnecessarily advocating for the devil, but like mm-hmm. now on Michael Smith, I just don't think there's any I I get stay in the course, <clears throat> and Denver's a great example of that. I just I don't see a world in which you can say. This is fine, but well, this but, is you what can you say, but but for a Tatum injury, we win. Mm-hmm. No, man, there's a flaw here, and I think it's number seven. Yeah, and and the crazy thing is, it's not like he's a bad player. Like, let's, let's no all... second team All NBA. He's a really good player. <laughs> he's a really good player. The question is all about the fit. Can he? Is he the fit right with player? This... Right. Can he's he a good fit player. with this roster? He's the right player for them. Yes. Can he fit with this roster, this timeline, with what you need out of it? And honestly, here's the thing. Brad Stevens and, and Danny Ainge before him, they made a decision when they came around and Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown were the dynamic young wings that had potential. They made the decision, we don't need a point guard, right? That right. wasn't Tatum right. and Brown that made that decision. That was That's an architectural true. decision made by the architects. So if you if you say no more Kyrie Irving, no more Kimball Walker, no more Isaiah Thomas, and not that those guys are – you know, savant, you know, pass first point guards, but they are point guards. And we're going to leave these two guys to their own devices. What happens when the device fails? And that's where you are now. So either A, if you're going to give Jalen Brown all this money, you have to do things to protect him from himself. You have to do things to protect yourselves from long-term failure. There's a lot of things that we do. We, we, bow our heads in the sand Michael Smith we don't ask certain questions or we do ask certain questions that either lean into the possibility of failure or we run away and shield ourselves from the possibility of failure that's the spot that the Celtics are in right now because they know exactly who they're dating and if you know exactly who you're dating and you are considering marriage or next step or whatever that is like yeah, if you date Marcus only... Graham, you know Marcus Graham <laughs> gonna be looking gonna be looking at the woman across the street. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It's best that you that's put gonna, on some glasses. That's gonna be that's gonna be us. In, that's gonna be us in fifty years. You see, she by herself. Mm-hmm. Um, exactly. So look, exactly. All right, we have gone forty minutes, and we talked about the Celtics, and we talked yep. about the team that failed, and you and I are both intentionally intentionally using that word. Because we're going to come back to that in a second. But I, I feel like, but it's a story in Miami. Because like I said, they made history. Nobody had ever gone up 3-0, lost a 3-0 lead the way that they did in epic, historic fashion. And Havlicek stole the ball. And there's a steal by bird fashion. And come back to win game seven on the road. Now, granted, that's their home away from home. But here's another one. I got another one to blow your mind this morning that I read, bro. Check this out. I mean, like we talk about like the flagship franchises in the NBA, Boston, the Lakers, the Spurs. The Heat were founded 35 years ago. You and I are old enough to have been alive for the entire existence of the Miami Heat, for the Ronnie Cycling Miami Heat. They've reached seven NBA finals. That's a fifth of all their seasons they've been in the NBA finals. Pat Riley, you know, uh, relatedly, uh, on a related note, This is his 19th NBA Finals as a player, coach, or executive. That's a quarter of all NBA Finals. It's like, so heat culture. Like, what do we say about what Miami just did as becoming the second eighth seed to make an NBA Finals, to do it the hard way, um, 
with again without Jimmy Butler being Jimmy freaking Butler the last several games. Um like maybe the story isn't as much Boston as it is Miami. Did they just lose to while a lower seeded team? Did they just lose to the better constructed? Like we're talking about poor uh, roster construction. Did they just lose to the the better constructed team? Perhaps they lost to their exact opposite, like the Spider Man meme, except in a completely they lost opposite the venom. way. <clears throat> they lost. Yeah, the they venom. lost the venom. They lost the venom. Mm-hmm. They here's the thing: Boston specializes in beating themselves. Right. As we've seen. Yeah. The one team in the NBA that is not going to beat itself yeah. is the Eric Spolster Miami Heat. You may yeah. be better than them. You may yeah. out talent them. You may out execute them, but you're not going to yeah. out prepare them. You're not going to out scheme them. Right. And, and, even and they are even they're though not the, going to the Derek do it to White. Themselves. Even the Derek. Sorry. Even the Derek White miracle play. People was like. Oh, you got to account for the inbounder. Oh, you got to box out. They ain't had shit to do with it. <laughs> they ain't what it. It's like they knew what they were doing. <laughs> like they still didn't beat themselves. They got beat by a bad bounce. You know, <laughs> they got beat by a perfect. It took the perfect shot, the perfect yeah. bounce, the perfect circumstances yep. for that series yeah. to not end in six games. And I tell you this much about Pat Riley: for as many gut wrenching losses as Pat Riley has suffered in L.A., in New York, in Miami. I guarantee yeah. you, in a moment of quiet reflection, Pat, would you rather have won this game in game six in Miami and get a couple of days of rest before going to Denver? Or would you rather go to Boston and steal the hearts <laughs> of Boston Celtics fans? Yeah, again? yeah that was worth it. That was worth Pat, it. <laughs> Pat would say, give me the pain. Yeah. Give yeah. me the pain. So hey, You can't so, have pleasure without pain. <laughs> yeah. Well... Never mind. That's that's a conversation for a whole other day. And as and as, a, and as a single man, we ain't got I, nothing but time. We ain't got I'm nothing but time, to, man. I'm, I'm going to make sure that that's that's like you said. Sometimes the greatest pleasure is accompanied by the greatest pain, go. or 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 vice versa. But, that was that was that was my speaking of the heat. That was my D Wade to alley oop to LeBron. <laughs> Did you you thought you thought your arms too easy. out? That was too easy. That was too easy. But no, I, I think w- with Miami, we spend so much time on the, you know, what the uh, undrafted players, mm-hmm. you know, Jimmy Butler making making fun of Heat culture and all. You know, it's like a punchline. Ah, oh, Heat culture now nah, they're the eighth seed, but they were the one seed last year. And if Jimmy Butler puts a little bit more leg into that three pointer, you know, and at the end of Game Seven, another Celtics collapse on the road. Honestly. Then the Heat are going to the finals for a second straight year. And mm-hmm. I'll tell you this, Michael. This is parody in the NBA. There is one team from, or two teams rather, from 2019 to now. So that's that'll be four NBA finals, five NBA finals. 2019, 20, 21, 22, yep. 23. Five NBA finals, right? Mm-hmm. There are two franchises that have actually been in multiple NBA finals the last five years. It's the Golden State Warriors and the Miami Heat. Mm-hmm. And, and there's been different matchups. You got to think about it. Usually there's a common denominator, Michael, in every NBA final that we've had up until 2019. Remember you had the, the Golden State Cleveland years and the Spurs years or LeBron. And then all of a sudden, there were no common denominators. And even before that, it was the you know it was the Lakers, it was the Shaq Kobe Lakers, it was the Kobe Lakers, it was the Duncan Spurs, the Bulls. It was always a common thread. And now we're getting different teams every year. We're getting no more repeats. But the Miami Heat, who were in the finals in the bubble in 2020, back for more. Mm-hmm. That says a lot about this franchise in a way that it feels like there's more parity than ever. That they're able to come from being an eighth seed, and they arguably beat the two best teams in the league in Milwaukee and Boston and beat them essentially handily, right? You can bring up the circumstances. You can bring up them losing three games on the road to Boston, but you win three out of four games in somebody else's building. You are the better team. And at this point, at this point, 
don't we have to stop doubting the Miami Heat? For sure. No, I mean, look, and, and that's one of the things that's so frustrating about Jimmy Butler being as passive as he was uh, the last two games in particular is that I have said since the bubble that I don't know that there's a player. I'm not saying he's the best player. I'm not saying if I had a, uh, you know, if I was starting a team, I'm starting with Jimmy Butler. But if I had a game, a meaningful game to win, give me Jimmy Butler. Like I didn't, I didn't coin Jimmy effing Butler, but I've been effing with Jimmy Butler for a while, you know. And he's he's the he's the type of dude that I think has forged a reputation and a legacy, independent of whether or not he actually delivers a championship. That, that it is it's a select few guys like that. There's a select few dudes that we don't hold them not winning a championship against. And maybe it's because of how they, how they came in, the door that they came into. They didn't come in the front door. Maybe we don't hold them to the same standard. Maybe that's unfair. Maybe it's not. But there are certain dudes that, you know, it's like, we well, didn't win a championship. Yeah, but he was a bad mother. <laughs> I'm saying, like, it's just, just you know, it's, and I think that's, that's what Jimmy Butler is. Um, Jimmy Butler, so I'll ask you this, and you and I have been having this conversation bits and pieces of it offline with the time we got left and it might and we might need to go a little longer with this um and it's, it's interesting how it's 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 evergreen it's universal you and i've been wanting to talk about speaking of the bucks Giannis and his uh greek philosophy when it comes to failure the concept of failure uh and i i'm i believe we haven't really gotten deep into it I believe we're on, on the same page with this, but I'd be curious to hear your thoughts in full. Because from the Celtics standpoint, again, it's interesting. They went from playing with you know with house money to, to losing at home in game seven to now how did they get their house in order? Because you know a sweep would have been one thing, a gentleman's sweep, but like once they won those three in a row, it became their series to lose, especially with game seven at home. So given that they were up against history, or excuse me, even though they were up against history, that feels like a failure. And if, if as Giannis says, there are no failures in sports, there's only steps to success, I'd be damned if that didn't feel like a step backward for the Celtics. Yeah, <clears throat> I mean, I think Giannis is a very interesting case that you can't convince otherwise that his road is nothing more than steps to success because of where he came from. Correct. So I won't jump as on a him as a so, person as a yes. human i get like oh, sorry I'll, I'll get right back to you. i get why why Giannis Antetokounmpo thinks that way i get it like they made a movie yep. about this dude's life all right yep. they were written yep. books about this dude's life i get it but in general that was some bullshit i don't want to live in a world Vinny. i do not want to live in a world especially the sports world where there is no failure. The problem is that we attach a negative connotation to failure. There's nothing negative about it. It's part of the process. If I could borrow another cliche. <laughs> Dude, it, it, what's wrong with saying you failed? Nothing. Like, like just before we even go to a personalizing it point, because I'm sure we probably will go there. I look at the team of my youth or, or my my infancy, the bad boy Pistons. You talk mm -hmm. about Bird steals the ball. They lose that game in seven. You know, lose that series in seven. That was game five. They, you lose that series in seven. And you beat the Celtics the next year. And then you fail against the Lakers in the finals. Like, there's something to failure, forging, resilience, and reflection, and having... Mm -hmm. There's a phrase I want to use, but I can't use it because it's 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 really it's FCC airwaves and it's your podcast. But you got to have real moments with yourself after okay, yeah. failures. I'm about to say we've, we've yeah, cussed yeah. a few I, times I, already, but go yeah, ahead. no, no, it, 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 it ain't oh, okay. quite a cuss word, Michael. Oh, okay. I'm sure you could figure <laughs> all out. All right, it, okay, it ain't all quite right. a cuss word. Yeah, but yeah. It, it it's moments where you know we've all failed before. You know what I mean? We, we've all failed in something. You fail in relationships. You fail in family. You fail in your career yeah. where you step back and you recalibrate. And the greatest failures to me, at least in my life, haven't been the situations where, man, it's so far away that it's a mirage and I never got close to it. 
the biggest failures are where it's close enough where you can taste it and you can smell it and it's right in front of your face. And how much more do you need before you can attain whatever this thing is? And whether it turns into an abject failure or it turns into the Will Smith, how come he don't want me? Like, you got to be able to absorb that. Saying, saying that failure doesn't exist is basically saying I can't handle failure. I'm not strong enough to accept and acknowledge and process failure. And that's a flaw in your own architectural system because you got to be able to acknowledge it and process it and be able to move on from it and not let it devastate you beyond the initial devastation. Well, and that's what, and that's what I, I, I struggle with, with, with the, the Giannis, which, you know, obviously it got made into a commercial and it got celebrated and all that kind of stuff. And I'm just like, nah, man, like that just, that just feels soft because it's like, and I don't think that Giannis was saying, I don't think that Giannis views this that much differently. I think he says it differently or presents it differently. Mm -hmm. I think, mm -hmm. I don't think we're saying different things because it's like, he says there are no failures. We say there are failures, but we're both talking about them being steps in the process and steps to success. It's like, I mean, I don't think Giannis's philosophy, I, I've heard Kobe say similar things, if I'm not mistaken. You know what I'm saying? That it's just like, you know, I didn't, I didn't fail. I, I learned. Or, or Brady and Kobe have similar mindsets. But when you are the eighth seed or the number one seed and you lose to the eighth seed, that is a failure. When you have game seven at home, after winning the previous three, I guess momentum died here too, after winning the previous three, and you have game seven at home and you are the better team, and you, you that is a failure if you're the Boston Celtics. It's all relative, by the way. I mean, not everybody who loses is a failure. Or, or excuse me, let me rephrase that. Not everybody who loses failed. Because there, as right. many have pointed out, there's a difference between failing and being a failure. A, identifying as a something or a person identifying as a failure, that is problematic and that is much deeper than failing. We all fail and that's part of being a flawed human being. But to me, failure, now I'm about to get my Greek philosophy on, like to me, failure is what life is all about because if you're not failing, that means you're not trying hard enough. If you're not if you're not experiencing failure, then you're doing it wrong. Like you should be experiencing failures, and you sh but but you but but using those failures as 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 stepping stones as opposed to step backs or setbacks or I beg your pardon, I'm saying it again. Using those failures as stepping stones instead of setbacks or setups instead of setbacks is what life is all about, and what sports should be all about. You know, like we joked about you can't have the pleasure without the pain thing. It's like, who who are athletes and what is sports without, you know, drop passes or missed shots or heartbreaking losses only for those teams to come back and say, you know what, we had to go through that to get here from a personal standpoint, like. And I think a lot of it is just making peace with the failure, too. That's that's the process. Because, like, for me, it's like, have I failed? And, again, like, it has such a negative, it's a charge word. Oh, you failed. It's like, well, yeah, but that failure was necessary for, for, for a greater success or for, my or for my next move. Like, I often like to say, you know, you weren't rejected, you were redirected. Like, in my professional life, you know, whatever I would consider or what others may consider a failure, I have now been able to look back on and be like, no, actually, that was necessary. What did I learn from that? I know people have said I didn't lose. I learned. What did I learn from that? And how did it make me better? So, yes, it was a failure, but failure is not a failure is not an ugly, dirty word. And that's my you issue. Know it it's is. like, you know, yeah, you know what it is. People equate failure with final and that like it's a period there as opposed to a comma and that yeah. nothing happens after failure, that failure happens and it's all over and there's no chance for 
redemption. There's no chance right. for learning. There's no chance for, like you said, being able to redirect, reorganize your own, you know, individual chess pieces and move in a different direction. I think right. because, like you said, like I, I genuinely believe that it, like here's here's the best way I can put it. One, a book I read <clears throat> during the pandemic, it was called The Four Agreements. And I can't remember all four of them, but the number one thing of the four agreements was don't take things personally. Oh, and yeah. <laughs> I know, and I, and I know we, we've turned everything into the Michael Jordan meme, you know, and I took that personally, which is fine. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. that was the easiest thing for me to pull back from because I used to take everything personally, not everything, yeah. not like, not, not like a, um, a narcissist but right. if something happened to me then it's like you internalize it and you try to figure out man why did this happen to me you know what could right. i have done better what could i have done different as opposed to saying <clears throat> sometimes things happen you can't always prepare for everything and you've got to be able to lack of a better phrase you got to be able to pivot to whatever the next thing is even if it is after a failure it doesn't mean, like I said, that you're final, you're done, you're a failure. It just means that things have, the attributes have to be applied somewhere else. And it has to yeah. look and feel a little bit different. And we've seen in sports, Michael, Michael Jordan's greatest success came after his greatest failures. Losing to the Pistons all, right. all those years. Boom, three championships. Right. Losing to the Orlando Magic and, and in what some people would say embarrassing fashion. Boom coming back and winning through championships. Those things don't happen unless there is the heartbreak. And that's the thing. Failure we are so is, afraid of heartbreak. Yeah. Failure is the best part of the story. Like, that's when the story gets good is when you have to, like, who, who doesn't love a comeback story? What are you coming back from? What are you coming back from? You're coming back from adversity. You're coming back from failure. You're coming back and overcoming doubt, you know? And it's just like, I, I don't know, man. I just feel like if 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 you can't if you can't look back at, at at a failure and appreciate it, then I just think you need to shift your paradigm and shift your perspective. Like it hurts in the moment, and maybe you don't want to accept that we failed, because again, and I get why Gian, going back to Giannis, I get why Giannis responded the way he did in that moment, because that is a trigger word, mm -hmm. you know. But I think he said, you know, uh, whatever the number is, Jordan played, what is it, 15 years and won six championships. You're telling me the other nine years of failure? Yes. In his mind. I'm, and, I'm, and Jordan would say the same. You know what I mean? Like, absolutely. But it doesn't mean that Jordan was a failure. Right. Those seasons, he didn't re reach the goal. And again, expect, it varies for expectations. It goes like, to expectations. If yeah, if you're Michael Jordan, if you're Magic Johnson, like Magic Johnson went to the finals nine times. He lost four of them, right? That those were he would say those were failures. Not 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 to say that failure. Here's the other thing. I love how you said it's it's, it's not final. And not to say that the problem too is that people do not believe that there's value in failure. They don't embrace failure the same way they embrace successes. It's so like if we could count it all joy, we could learn to count it all joy and celebrate failure the same way we celebrate successes and look at them through the prism of what am I learning from it? How is it making me better? Then, then we, sh we shouldn't look at failure as the opposite side of a, of a coin. They're, to me, they're kind of like they're one and the same. I feel like a, a Frankie Beverly and Mays song. It's like joy and pain is like sunshine and rain. Can I get an Amen. <laughs> Amen. Now, what what I will say is, you said failure hurts in the moment. It failure hurts for hurts a long every, time. No, failure hurts every time you think about it. It for hurts sure. every. For sure. I don't. I don't know about the, the the things that I've really failed at. Even some things that some people would say that's not your failure. But I think that. But I think that's the lesson, though, Vinny. I think that's the lesson. I think the reason why it stings, and and hopefully a little bit less as time goes on. I think that's just. The lesson, that's the, it's the scar, it's the reminder. It doesn't mean it's still a wound or an open wound, but it's a reminder. So if you think about that failure, you know, if I think about 
things from my past. If I think about things, yeah, I'm glad you said it's not just in sports. It's not just professionally. It's, it's, it's a, whether it's a relationship, it's, well, what could I have done better? And now, what could I do better moving forward? Because you're not going to tell me that Giannis ain't going to be in the gym like a madman this summer. Not that he already isn't. Like, what you got, because it hurts because it's a reminder, hey, there's an opportunity to do something about it. There's an opportunity for, as you said, redemption. This sentence is going on. Well, here's the other thing. Because we we are in a culture of you can't sleep eight hours a night or whatever you know that that not that that ridiculous stuff or whatever that says oh if you want to be a millionaire you can't sleep and da 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 so we're trained and ingrained to say more do more do more exhaust yourself and if and if there's that then there's failure and then there's failure then it is a for who for what sort of situation like you know it, it's almost like the entire paradigm is flawed so you can't even acknowledge one with you can't acknowledge one you can't acknowledge the other so for me michael and i hope i'm making sense when i say this you make a lot of sense you go back into the you go back into your own personal lab and you do your own personal reflections and it's not always about working smarter or working harder you understand and last night was maybe the perfect example. And game six was a perfect example. Some things are out of your hands. Like lack of a better phrase, most of us in our positions, we do our best to control the variables in our personal life, in our prof especially in our professional life. We try to do everything we can to mitigate the possibility of failure, to mitigate the possibility of our fatal flaws coming back and haunting us in a huge way. And sometimes, Michael, whether it's an ankle or not even a missed box out, just a, yeah. you know, I'm three feet to the left a miracle and I bounce. missed this tip yeah. in, a, a miracle yeah. bounce, some things don't go your way, but you have to have right. the confidence and the foundation and the acknowledgement that something bad can happen, something devastating can happen, and I can pick myself up. It's and going to hurt. Good can come from it, You're right? And something good I mean, can listen. come from it, and that you may not I mean, always I'm... get your lick back. Like that's the other thing. You <laughs> may not always get your lick back. Hey, Jeremy, that's the title of this podcast. You may not always get your lick back. And I don't know if everybody gonna understand what that means, but we understand. What that... <laughs> I ain't heard nobody say that in a long time, man. That that and no early, no half. No, no early, no half. Remember that? <laughs> oh man, that is that is perfect. That is perfect. And you know what? I was gonna say something else, but that's a perfect way to end it, man. This has been fun. This has been this has been great as always, man. Um, it's it's great to talk to you, man. Like, well, we'll, always, we'll I'm sure bro. we'll pick always. this up later, brother. All right, love you, man. Sure. Thank you. Love you too, bro. All right.